with Chris Tanny now. Chris, a rivalry is a rivalry regardless of records. This week, Steelers and Ravens. Ben Roethlisberger coming off a great performance Monday night, leading the Steelers for their first win of the year. Joe Flacco is still Joe Flacco, and yet this will still be a grudge match. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ben didn't. I thought maybe my been Lamar Jackson. That would have been true. Right. <laughs> Big Ben didn't sugarcoat the rivalry, saying after playing the Ravens, quote, you feel like you've been in about five or six car wrecks. Oof. Kenny, you played for the Ravens. What's, what, what's this rivalry like? Well, I had the opportunity to be in this rivalry for three years, and it is the best rivalry in pro football. It ain't even close. But I remember after those games with the Steelers, you had to crawl to the bathroom the next morning just because you couldn't walk. You were that sore. So, I mean, that's, that's what you can expect. There aren't a whole lot of tricks between these two teams. Ain't no state secrets. They know each other, and it's just going to be a physical battle for four quarters. And the team that's able to under, overcome the adversity that's inevitably going to happen in that game, yeah. they're going to give themselves the best chance to win. And people say, well, why are these games so much more physical? For one, it's the style for which they both play. And... Coming into this game, Pittsburgh has always been known as a rugged organization. Now, they've gotten a little away from that on the offensive side. But when they play Baltimore, I mean, it's a fist fight. Now, they might throw some passes, but it is a fist fight. And because you know, each team, you know both teams so well that the plays, you recognize them so you can play faster. So you can anticipate, you can do things in these type of games that you can't do because you don't know what they're doing. You're guessing more in the other games. So that allows a different level of intensity with you being so familiar with it. But these are two teams that legitimately don't like each other. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been on the field before NFL games, and there's a rivalry. I was at the Saints and the Falcons game. There's a rivalry there. Like, it's bitter, but they don't hate each other. They call it hate week, but it's not like Pittsburgh – and in, in Baltimore, like you're going to see a different level from the players. Before the game, it's totally different. After the game, it's totally different. Most of the time after the game is, I can't wait till we see you guys again. So it's kind of a throwback. Not NFL that we're typically used to, used to seeing. And it's kind of refreshing for me because I got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. And, man, we used to go down the turnpike, go up the turnpike, <laughs> the New York football giants. Yep. And, man, we used, that was the rivalry that we had. And we had a great rivalry with the Dallas Cowboys. So I grew up in the NFC East, so I really appreciate, and also my college days, I appreciate a great rivalry. You, you've been, you mentioned college, obviously, against Michigan, but then also in the Vikings. The Vikings, Vikings Bears and Vikings Packers are, mm -hmm. two, I mean, the, the NFC North has these as well. I, I will say this. If this a typical Baltimore Pittsburgh game, the one you're describing, that benefits Baltimore no right doubt. now no because doubt. of how these teams are built in 2018. Mm. The Steelers don't have the mauling defense they once did. Right now, the defense is just trying to hold on to the rope. The Steelers don't have, in my eyes, a reliable running game right now. The Steelers, despite the the colors on the jersey, they want to play a finesse type of football. They want to. They, they want to. You know who they want to play with? The Saints and the Falcons. Let's, let's, let's go indoors. Yeah. Let's throw it around. Yeah. Let's try to go out and score you. Right. Baltimore. I know Flacco had that awesome Week One game, and they won last week. But in Week Two and Three, Flacco started to look more uh, like the Joe yeah. Flacco I know know so well and so that's the what Jenna was talking exactly. about Joe right. Flacco. Joe Flacco. It's back Joe Joe Flacco. and so I so if you're Baltimore you want it to be a game a lot of penalties mucked it up you know what I mean where yeah. it is a running defensive game Pittsburgh is trying to say we think we can score 31 on anybody and we want to see if you can hang with us now Pittsburgh couldn't do that against Cleveland Right? Like Cleveland, now part of that was the half dozen turnovers, yeah. but Cleveland was able to muck that game up. Mm -hmm. That's the game plan Baltimore needs to be looking to. How can we keep this game low scoring? Because a low scoring game, in my eyes, benefits the Ravens because I don't think they can keep up with Pittsburgh's weapons through the air. Well, I don't think the Ravens are going to have the benefit the Browns did in week one with 40 mile an hour wind gusts and mm -hmm. torrential rain. Yep. But in looking at this, you're absolutely right, Nick, especially being down your number one corner in Jimmy Smith. The Ravens want to find a way to be able to slow this game down, but they don't have that reliable run game themselves. I mean, we're talking about the Steelers without Lev Bell and David DeCastro, but the Ravens haven't set the world on fire in terms of being able to rush the football with Alex Collins. So I look at that Joe Flacco that we saw on the road on a short week in Cincinnati, and if he's going to play like that, 
two interceptions, four sacks, and have your team down 21 nothing after one quarter of football, then the Ravens have no shot in this game. You saw what the Steelers did last week. They came out with their foot on the gas on Monday night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And guess what? Even though their defense can't stop a nosebleed, they were able to be opportunistic and have four takeaways. And that's the difference. Pittsburgh is going to have to be a bend but don't break unit defensively. And they know if they're able to steal possessions offensively with the playmakers that they have, Tony Totap and, of course, Juju Smith-Schuster, they're going to be able to put up a lot of points, and Baltimore ultimately can't match scores with them. So that's the kind of complexion that benefits the Steelers, and that's what the Baltimore Ravens have to be able to avoid. They've got to take care of the football. They've got to be able to establish a ground game, make it physical, and shorten the game. That's the only shot they got going into high field. Last week was the first we really saw that Pittsburgh offense kind of come together without having Le'Veon Bell on the field. Is that the offense you expect to see now moving forward, or does everything just sort of happen right for, for Ben Roethlisberger? No, I think I think that's the offense that we can expect to see moving forward and I think the offensive coordinator is starting to get a feel for how to utilize his personnel even without Le'Veon Bell. One of the plays that comes to mind was Antonio Brown's touchdown catch. If you look at that formation, they had a quad set and so they had two tight ends, a wide receiver and the running back offset to Ben Roethlisberger's left and then that forces the linebackers to boss over and that forces the safeties to rotate down to that three receiver side. Well, guess what? Antonio Brown's in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they just threw the ball out there. He made one guy miss, and as off he goes, he's in the end zone. I look for them to try to create those matchups with the guys in the Baltimore Ravens secondary because without Jimmy Smith, Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, they'll take advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage and make some big plays happen. Yeah, Ben's got to be excited going against this Baltimore defense, the emergence of Vance McDonald there as a speed tight end. You add that to what Juju Smith-Schuster is doing, it should be exciting. Ben, I believe, is looking to build on what he did last week and kind of dissect this defense, the Ravens defense that is not the Ravens with Ray Lewis no. defense. And it could be if they have a good offensive game. Remember, they put up 37 in the loss to Kansas City. So the offense yes. was not the problem in week right. two for Pittsburgh. And then last week, they scored 30 in the first half. All right, Chris, stick around. Coming up, can the Vikings slow down the Rams on Thursday night football? Today is Thursday. We get to see that tonight. That's next on First Things First. Hey, check out the opening and everything. You might recognize oh, the guy. Oh, this guy. He better. Even could be over four. We might have to do it.